Ours was 50 meters, right? Oh, okay, so ours wasn't going quite 45 meters per second then, so don't panic if that's what you came up with. Um, this was for the, the morning class I had it as 100. All right, so 10 meters down, 10 meters per second, throwing it down, 10 meters per second, throwing it up. What's the final velocity for this guy? What's the final velocity for this guy? All right, well, here's the way you can do this. It works out pretty slick. All right, since we know the distance, we know the distance, you could set up a quadratic and come up with a time. Now the times are going to be completely different for the two, but it, it would actually work out the same. In other words, you could, I'm, I'm also going to show you a, uh, so when you're working your homework, because I know most of you kind of work, you by a computer and everything, I'm going to show you a website so that you can just plug in your quadratic numbers and boom, it gives you the, the answers so you don't have to mess with it. Um, same with two equations, two unknowns things, because this isn't an algebra, high school algebra two class or college algebra class. This is a physics class. I don't want you to get all bogged down in the math problems. I want you to come up with the physical answers. All right, let's find the final. We've got a, uh, we know what the acceleration is, all right, but we don't know how long it took each one to um, get to the bottom of the hill. Uh, but we could figure that out with a quadratic formula. But we could just figure out the final velocity for the first one. Let's say this for one, final velocity for the first one equals the initial velocity squared minus 2g times uh, 0 minus 50. Because this is at 50. This is at 0. Fell 50 meters. So you take final minus the initial. And that's nice because this gives us a good v squared plus um, 100g, okay, equals the vf squared, which equals 100 plus 100g. Oh, wow. Probably never thought you'd have to factor in your life, did you? Here you go. Here's, here we can factor this. We get 100 times 1 plus g. So it roughly comes out to be, um, isn't that right, so far? Right? So you get 10.8 times 100. What's 10.8 times 100? 1,080, right? So you get 1,080 here. What's that? Oh, it's 9.8. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. The magnitude of g is 9.8 meters per second squared. And I factored out the minus sign. And then when I did that minus minus, it came out to be plus. So I got 1080 meters squared per second squared, vf squared, 1080. Three times around the circle, right? Um, and then take the square root of that. And it should be around 30 something. Second square root of 1080 equals 32.8 meters per second. Now, that's for going up. That's, that's for the positive 10. Now look at, problem, look at the second one we threw down. We've got VF squared equals V naught squared minus 2G times 0 minus 50. It's the same thing. But look, we're squaring this negative. What's negative 10 squared? 100, right? It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing as this. It works out. But the thing is, if you, if you plug in for the time for this one, the time on this one is going to be much longer than the time on this one. And the only way to get, and the way to get the time is through the quadrat. You can, one thing you can do, first of all, we have to know that this is a negative 32. And this will work out to be the same thing. VF equals negative, negative 32.8 uh, meters per second. But now, let's take a look at the actual um, definition of acceleration. And that will give us the time for both of these. You'll see that the times are very much different, even though their velocities were the same. Okay? So the actual 
For this one, we'll do the acceleration is this. By the way, I'm going to throw this out there. What is the acceleration of, uh, what's the definition of acceleration, the, the standard definition? What's that? Change, in change of velocity over change in time. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do the change in velocity over the change in time. So if we change the velocity, so for, for one, for the first one, we have um, V initial was equal to 10 meters per second, and V final was equal to negative 32.8 meters per second. And so you've got um, negative 9.8 meters per second squared equals negative 32.8 meters per second minus 10 meters per second, because that's what VF minus V naught is equal to, divided by T. And so T equals negative 32.8 meters per second minus 10 meters per second divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's going to come out to be nice seconds. And we get uh, 32.8 minus 10 or actually it'd be plus 10 for this equals divided by 9.8 this one comes out to be 4 t equals 4.3 seconds about this one part 2 where we have v naught is equal to negative 10 meters per second and v final equals negative 32.8 meters per second is equal to this. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which equals VF minus 32.8 minus a minus 10 divided by T. So it flips around. So you get this negative 32.8 plus 10 divided by 9 point, negative 9.8. And that's going to be quite a bit smaller. So you get negative 32.8 plus 10 equals divided by negative 9.8 equals 2.3 seconds, which makes sense to us. So the one we threw down got there a lot quicker than the one we threw up, right? Which, which is good. That, that fits into our, that's in our wheelhouse. We, we understand that. You can use all kinds of stuff. You the square root of 2y over negative g, because you were doing this. You went vf squared equals v naught squared minus 2gy, right? Yeah. Problem. We got issues. Well. Once you subtract, to find the final velocity, did you already know the final velocity? Yeah, you assumed it was zero. Or so, well, you, you assumed one of these guys was zero. So you got it, this is if you, that's if you drop it. Okay? If you just drop the thing, you get um, y, well, yeah. So you gotta get a lot more. Right, because you, you got a zero for your initial velocity. This one we threw it, so we have to, we, should, we could still use that equation, of course. We used it to find out what the final velocity was. All right. And if we stick those times back in and, and we work this problem backwards with, if we said negative 50 equals negative uh, 10t minus 4.9t squared. If I put 2.3 in here and 2.3 squared in there, that's going to come out to be negative 50. If I put um, 4.3 and negative 4.3 in there, it's going to come out to be um, negative 50. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Or, or if I put, oh, but, but this would be if t equals 2.3, I'm sorry, and negative 50 minus 10 is going to equal positive 10t minus 4.9t squared. I misspoke there for t equals 4.3.
Now that makes sense. What I just said now, now makes sense. Where you got the positive 10 or the negative 10. All right. Your head should be swimming by now. We did the balloon problem. Were there any other um, homework problems? We, I told you we'd play Stump the Chump for the first 15 minutes or so of class. Any homework problems that are killing us? All of them? All, I, I heard muttering of all of them. Well, we did the balloon problem, so I don't want to redo that one. I don't want to go vi revisit that one. Uh, a specific one? Sh should I just randomly pick one? Let's randomly pick one of them that was given the other, given your, given your compatriots in the other class a hard time. Uh, we did the roller coaster in here too, right? We already did the roller coaster, so that's good. Um, we did the oh, did we do the rock? Did we throw the stone? Did we do um, the extra credit problem seventy four? We threw the ball up in the air. Tennis ball is dropped from a height. Isn't that it? Oh no, that's not it. We did the one. One of them, didn't we drop a tennis ball and it bounced? Oh, yeah, here it is. A, a tennis ball is dropped from a height of 10 meters. It rebounds off the floor and comes up to a height of only 4 meters. Did we do that problem? No. Okay, that's a good one. That's an extra credit problem. It's a really nice one. I, didn't, I was kind of bootsy with my other class because I didn't... I didn't uh, do it for them. So they're like, I guess it was Bootsy. Could be scandalous or whatever. It's been a long time since I've been teaching at Don Bosco. I still miss it. By Friday, my wife had no idea what I was saying. But <laughs> all right. Here we go. All right, so I drop a tennis ball. Okay, I'm going to drop it from 10 meters. I'm going to drop this tennis ball from 10 meters. Now, what's it? Before we even get started, what's the initial velocity of the tennis ball? If I drop it, zero. zero. Yeah, yeah. Its initial height is ten meters. Okay, so we'll give Robin credit. We'll say okay. We'll we'll, we'll say all right. Ten meters. That's the correct answer. But the initial velocity is zero meters per second. All right. So now, and it's ten meters in the air. Okay. Now, later on when we start talking about energy, we're going to talk about perfectly elastic collisions, which about the only place a perfect elastic collision takes place is with is in um, between atoms and stuff like that. But for the most part, they don't happen. But if we did have a perfectly elastic p collision, that means no energy is lost when it hits the ground and bounces back up. So therefore, if it was a perfectly elastic collision, it would bounce back up to 10 meters. But this one, it, the ball got smooshed. Okay, it came down and got smushed down lost a lot of energy, and then, it, and then it, when it recoiled and sprung back up, it only came back up four meters high. Now, what they want to know is, on this problem, we kind of walk the dog on this problem. It says, determine the ball's speed just before it hits the floor on the way down. This is 74. So we're going to determine the ball's speed just before it hits the floor. I think we got an equation for that. Right? We got some. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Um, we got this guy. Whatever it says, find the final velocity. Find the final velocity. I go. I go straight to this guy. Go straight to that equation. 
Now, that's probably bad pedagogy for physics, is just telling you which equation to grab. But um, we could also figure out, since we know the acceleration and we know the height, we could also figure out its time and figure out its final velocity that way, too. In fact, that's not a bad way to go. Let's abandon this because um, to find the final velocity, we've, we've, we know that acceleration is equal to VF minus V naught over um, T. And so the final velocity just equals um, the acceleration times time. So if we can find the time, which we can find from this equation, because y equals um, y naught um, plus v naught t minus one half g t squared. That's our free fall equation for just finding the uh, the time. And so this one we're, we're actually works out kind of nice because y final is zero. We've got ten. This guy's zero because of the initial velocity zero. And so we've got 4.9 t squared equals 10. We get t squared equals the square root of 10 over 4.9, which is real close, which is real close to, to the square root of 2, which is about 1.4 seconds. Let me find out exactly what that is. One point four three seconds actually. We'll go with three significant digits there with one point four three seconds. So the final velocity then should be this one will always do you good to find time. If you're given an initial velocity, you know the distance and you know the uh, you know the uh, um, acceleration. If you know the acceleration, this guy's a good one to go with. So he's the basic one. All right. So we got that. We got that. We got that. We got that. So we will just say VF is 1.43 or 9.8 times 1.43 seconds. Remember, your numbers may differ. You might be at 12 meters or something. 14 meters per second. Now, at the risk of boring you completely right out of your mind, I bet you if we went VF squared is equal to, well, this was 0. And this would be 0 minus 10, so that's a negative 10. That would be 20 equals uh, 20 times g. I'll bet you if I took the square root of that, if I took 20 times 9.8 and took the square root, oh, it's going to work out sweet because that's 196. I already know that that's the uh, square root of 14. And there it is, 14. This gives us VF equals 14 meters per second. Okay? It says that this one, I kind of like this one because that, I forgot to put it in, but that's the negative sign. This one we have to remember, oh, yeah, that's going down. That's going down. Okay? So there we go. So that makes that negative. So it's, so it's a vector. It's, it's going down. All right, now. Okay, determine the ball's speed as it leaves the floor on its way up to its first rebound height. Okay, so now what happens is the ball goes down, boing, gets smushed, and then boing, shoots back up to four meters high. Okay, so if, I, if it shoots back up to four meters high here, Again, what is the acceleration? Has the acceleration changed on this thing? No. 
Acceleration, acceleration is still negative 9.8 meters per second squared going down. What's his final velocity at this juncture when he gets up to his maximum height? Zero. And his acceleration is still negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so, and its height was four meters. This one went from y not is equal to zero to y final equals four meters because he, he's going from here up to here. So here we go again. We've, we've got, uh, now this time we've got zero equals v not squared minus 2g times 4 minus 0. You might be going, uh oh, well, we're we going to take the square root of a negative number? No, because we'll add this to both sides, and we'll get v naught squared equals 8g. Okay. Okay, now. It wants to know the time it was in the air from the first drop to the second drop, or, or from, from we let it go boing to back up, okay? Well, we already found one time, didn't we? What did I do with it? It's what I erased it, 1.43 seconds. Then all we gotta do is find the time of this guy, all right? And we know, again, to find the time that the acceleration is um, the change in velocity, so you got zero minus whatever this square root of eight g. It's almost square. It's almost nine meters per second. I, I'm going to guess eight point eight or something like that meters per second. Point eight times eight square root is eight point eight five. Pretty good. So the, so the velocity shooting it back up was 8.85 meters per second. All right, so you got zero minus 8.85. Uh-oh. Oh yeah, we're fine. Divided by T, and this is negative 9.8. So we're good, this is good, you switch these guys, you multiply both sides by t, divide by negative 9.8, and you should have a nice positive time, about point something. And then you just add that to your 1.43 that we found over here. So that was a detailed, that was a long detailed problem. Would you expect something like that on a test? No. It should take you the whole 30, you know, I can only test you for 50 minutes, really. Then your brain shuts down. But um, that'd be way, that's, That'd be a take-home test type problem. Oh, how did I find that? I made it up. No. Actually, I used, I used this equation right here. V squared equals V naught squared minus 2GY. And I'm going to be more careful with my 2GY. This is Y final minus Y initial. So my y initial was zero, y final is four, we know g, we know v naught squared, we don't know, and this guy's zero. So I was solving this equation right here. That's how I got it. And I did like nine steps of algebra in my head here by bringing this over here and making a positive. There's all kinds of little algebra steps in that one little part there. All right. Let's talk about vectors for a minute. I think we talked about them the other day. We had the nice little laser light show on, on vectors. Um, I'm going to give a, you all been to lab? We went to lab yesterday? and. And you and you, they gave you the little force table, right? With and you made your little vectors and stuff. All righty. Well, now you've got to figure out what all that stuff means, right? You got to add up all those vector forces so that they come out to be zero, correct? All right. Isn't that what it is? Is that what you do? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. 
Okay, that's fine. All right. Here we go. Let's talk about vectors. Let's, let's do this. I'm going to do this in about 20 minutes or so. Then we're going to take a little quiz, and it's going to be kind of a, a backwards type quiz in that it's going to be stuff you, I just want to see what, you, what your intuition's telling you, all right? And then we'll go over, now next week we'll start legitimate quiz, but we'll, we'll go over the answers and stuff before you have to turn it in and everything, because you should get some credit for being here. All right, so here we go. Let's say I'm going to draw a vector A. I'm going to draw a vector A. And A looks like this. He's three units in the x hat direction, in the positive x hat direction. That's the x component of A. And he is, oh, four units in the positive y hat direction. Okay, so what is his magnitude? What's his magnitude? If he goes three and then four, what's the magnitude? Five. It's a good three, four, five triangle, okay? So here's the magnitude right here of five. And you got the magnitude of A. This is what it looks like maybe in your lab manual, the magnitude of A is equal to the square root of the x component plus the y component. Let's go ahead and figure out what the angle is here for A real quick. The angle for A is, what the way we do that is we take the inverse tangent, okay? Back in the day when I learned this, we had to go to tables. We didn't have a calculator. You had to go to a table and break out your slide rule and do it, okay? Well, you beat on skins with bones and stuff like that. But anyway, so, and then this is the y component divided by that component. And we wind up with second 10, 4 divided by 3. Should be about 53 degrees. Yep, it's 53.1 degrees out the three sig figs. Okay? So that's the angle. I'm going to take a vector B. Now I'm going to take vector B. I'm going to, and vector B is going to be, oh, let's say 12 units in the x direction and 5 units in the y direction. So he's like this. Okay? Anybody know what the magnitude of B is? Just off the top of your head, you ever seen that one? The classic 5, 12, 13. Exactly, 5, 12, 13. Okay, now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say A, I want, I want to know what A plus B plus C is. I'm going to come up with some vector C that equals 0. I want it all to add up to zero. Let's say, in, in other words, let's say I'm going on a hike and I went here, and I went here, and I want to find the most direct route back home. Okay? So, let's take A and B. Graphically, it looks something like this. I have A. Ooh, that's not a very good A. 53 degrees should be more like this. Here's A, here's B, and then here's C. Graphically, that gives me a pretty good ballpark of what C is, but C is not 18, is it? I can't, we can't, nothing in life is that easy, so no, it's not. So here's kind of an easy way to find 
find A and B, and oh, well, actually the C to get me back home looks like this. It's the opposite of this guy. C to get back home, I, gotta, I better put it right there. There we go. Well, let's find out what A and B is. We're gonna, we're, we can do that, that's a legal move. Little uh, associated property of addition, okay? All right, so here we go. So the way to get A and B is like this. It's, it's pretty simple when it's already broken down into its components. We've got 3x plus 4y, and we've got 12x in that y direction plus 5y. I'm sorry. This afternoon, I did a good job of explaining what that little hat is. That little hat here, this x hat and this y hat, that's, that means we're dealing with vectors. That's a unit vector pointing in the x direction, okay? And this means I'm, taking a mag I'm going to take that unit vector and multiply it by a magnitude of 12, and so it's 12x going that way. That's what that tells me. If it was a negative 12, which way would it be going? The other way, right. Okay, so there you go. So to take A plus B, all I got to do, add these puppies up, and I get uh, 15x hat plus uh, 9y hat. There it is. There it is. And, um, oh, Mary's jumping the gun. All right, that's good. That's good. She's going, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're not done. Right. All I did was this right here. That's all we got done so far. Okay? And now, and now Mary's ready to go. She's going, hey, wait, I want to get home. I'm tired of this. I'm ready to go. So she's saying, hey, so C, what would I need to add to this to make this equal zero down here? To make this zero x hat and this zero y hat. Right, negative 15x minus 9y hat. x hat minus 9y hat. There you go. So that would be going in the opposite direction. Is this a good test question? Yeah. And this tells us, because if we draw our coordinate axis system here, we see, oh yeah, he's going negative 15 and then dropping down negative 9. The magnitude of this vector would be 15 squared plus 9 squared, square root. And yeah, that's what the magnitude would be. And the angle, the angle would be kind of tricky. What you'd have to do to find the angle, you go theta equals the inverse tangent of negative 9 over negative 15, right? Yeah, and your calculator is going to come up with a positive angle, but you'd have to know that that would be considered south of west, okay? So you'd go, okay, that angle is going to be the inverse tangent of negative 15. Oh, do I have that backwards? No, negative 9 divided by negative 15. That will give me about 31 degrees. So immediately he writes down 13, 31 degrees south of west. Okay. Or you could add 180 to it. Yes. Is that what you can really say? The answer to the other question is figured it out. Yes. Okay. Okay, because that's because we haven't done the second half yet. Okay. All right. So first of all, what? Isn't that is the bottom angle thirty-one degrees? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Not the upper one. Don't have to subtract it by 52.1. What? 
because you did you did the, the right bottom triangle. angle towards the center of the floor. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here's what the angle would be. He's coming like this. It's that angle off there. It's 31 degrees. Right? That that tells me south and west. Why'd you use nine of fifteen? Shouldn't you use the you use y over x, right? Which is my y component. It's nine. So this, so this is, so it's this angle right here. Here's my, here's my x component, and here's my y component, right? So I'm finding that angle right there. Okay. Now, if you're orienteering, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna. This is actually gonna be this angle right here. If you don't want to do southwest, you can add 180 to it. Uh-huh. The, um, five, the magnitude is five, the magnitude is 13, and the two. Uh-huh. Maybe I missed it, but how did you exactly get the five and the 13 to the max? I mean, how do you know that that would be 13 or that would be five from the 3x and the 4y? Oh, here's, here's what the magnitude means. Right. You take this squared plus this squared and take the square root of the whole thing. Add them up. So that was the answer of that. Exactly. This equals 5. Right. I'm sorry. And then 12 squared plus 5 squared, take the square root of that, that equals 13. Because this is 169. Good. Any others? Questions? Because we still got, we still got Michaela's question kind of hanging out there. She's like, all right. I want, vectors give us a way to add things together. But they have to be like things. We can't add velocities and meters together. But we can add meters and meters. But vectors do what? They give us two things. They got a magnitude and a direction. Okay. And um, I think you guys were doing masses in your lab, right? Which basically, if you multiply by 9.8, you got all the forces. And what you wanted to do was, I'm not sure. I I haven't really done the lab, but let's take a look at an example here. Let's draw an xy coordinate system. Oh, let's say I've got a vector of so many newtons, which is a force, which we haven't gone over yet. Don't worry about it. Newtons is just mainly mass times acceleration, all right? And it's the way we measure force, okay? So let's say we've got a vector of, oh, let's call him 35 newtons going this way. And his angle is 53 degrees. And let's say we've got a vector of um, 40 newtons this way. And he's got an angle of uh, 40 degrees. And then we got this vector over here. And this is vector A. And this is vector B. And we got vector C right along the negative x-axis here. And he's uh, negative 60 newtons. I want to add all those up. I want to find out what the net force is that's acting on this center thing right here. Some guy's pulling this way at 35 newtons. Some guy's pulling down this way at 40 newtons. And some guy's pulling this way at 60 newtons. What's the overall force and which direction is it going to go? Okay. Now, remember, Mother Nature loves symmetry. If we had a nice simple problem like this, where the, these two angles would be exactly the same, and these two newtons would be exactly the same, 100 newtons and 100 newtons, what would you all say that the direction of that would be going? Straight up. Exactly. Because the x components, you'd see right away, cancel each other out, right? And, oh, the only components that we're going to add together are going to be the y's. So it's going to go straight up. All right? That's kind of a, just kind of get us grounded here that we have seen this type of stuff before. We can, we can do this, but now we're going to put some fancy math to it is all we're doing. Okay? And it's not, and it's not all that fancy. Remember, our slide said, um, this, uh, the reason I like this book is they don't get cute. They say anything along the x-axis, you multiply by the cosine of the angle. And anything along the y-axis, you multiply by what? 
the sine of the angle. Because notice, what we have here with these magnitudes is we have the hypotenuse already of that right triangle. Okay? So, we want to find the legs. In other words, I want to find the AX. Here's AX. And then right next, right running with it is BX. So those two guys I'm going to add together. And this guy is, oh, this is vector C. And here comes CX this way. Okay? So I'm going to add AX and BX I gotta figure, to CX, figure out what those are. And I'm going to add, here's my AY part. Here's my BY part. Well, I'm going to add those two together. But what is BY? Is it positive or negative? Negative. What's the Y component to vector C? Zero. Because it's not going up at all. It's right along the X axis. So it doesn't have a Y component. So let's figure out. We're going to find the resultant vector R, which is going to be A plus B plus C. And we can kind of get an eyeball idea of what that's going to look like by doing this. We can go, okay, well, here's, I'm going to draw A first. And then I'm going to draw B, which is going to come down almost to zero like that. And then I'm going to draw C. I bet you it kind of goes like this. So I bet you're going to wind up with a little resultant vector that looks like that. It's all said and done. Probably. What's that? What's this thing? Each vector on top of one another. Right. Here's vector A, here's vector B, and here's vector C. I, I started A at the origin, drew, drew it up here, here's the head, then I put B on the tail end of B on the head of A, drew B, and then I drew C going back this way. And this should be my resultant vector, that little vector right there. Should be R. So here we go. Here's how we do this. Breaking it down. So we've got R then is going to be A plus B plus C. So A is equal to the AX component is going to be 35 cosine of 53 in the X hat direction plus what? What's the Y component? What's the y component of vector A? This guy. He's going to be? Right. 35 sine of 53 in the y direction. B is going to be what? What's the x component of B going to be? Oh. I should, probably should have made him different. 40 cosine of 40 in the x hat direction plus 40 sine. Whoa! I made a mistake. What's my mistake? What about the y component of b? What's he going to be? Minus. minus. Very good. Okay, so he's minus 40 sine of 40 degrees. And then c is, what's the x component? Which direction? Negative. Negative 60. Now, a cute thing we could do is we could say it's positive 60, because the magnitude is always a positive number, times the cosine of 180. What's the cosine of 180? It's negative 1, so, but we don't do that. We just look at the picture and go, okay, it's going negative. What about the y component? There you go. All right. And then you just add those up. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to do that for the x part and the y part. So we go 35 cosine of 53. That's 21.6 plus 40 cosine of 40 
plus negative 60. Boy, I was right. It's negative 8. The, the y component is negative. Um, the resultant then vector is negative 8.29 in the x hat direction. I should make it 8.3 because we're using two sig figs. Well, I'll leave it as negative 8.2, which kind of looks about right. Negative 8.2 going this way. And then for the y component, we've got 35 sine of 53 is 27.9 minus 40 sine of 40. And I get 2.24. Oh! I guess that's pretty good. I did a pretty, I did, that's not a bad eyeballing it. Because see, I get negative 8.8, .8, positive 2.24. That's about what I thought it was going to be. And its direction, its direction theta is going to be the inverse tangent of 2.24 over uh, 8.29. I just always go with the magnitudes. And then I go, okay, by my picture, and, and just by knowing that this is negative and that's positive, I know he's in which quadrant? Is he going to be in? Which quadrant is this? Second quadrant. So I know he's going to be north of west. This guy is north of east. First quadrant is north of east. This one is south of east. And we've already discussed that one south of west. Okay, so he's tangent theta. So we could take the inverse. Whoops. Second inverse 2.24 divided by 8.29. 15.12 degrees. North of east. All right. That's a nice little vector problem. They're all like that. They're all very cookbook. Okay? It's, 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 there's no other way to do it. It's just a cookbook. And I'm not going to play cute with you. Um, let's see. From chapter 3, I said the only thing you needed to worry about was uh, finding the range of something. So you'll, you'll have to do a couple vector type addition and subtraction problems. First of all, you're going to do it in lab. You're already doing it in lab, right? And then secondly, you're going to uh, do it on the homework. I won't have you do a problem like this on the test because there's going to be a lot of material on the test. I'll tell you right now, when we take the test, which will be a week from Tuesday night, when we take a test a week from Tuesday, chapter one will not be on it. It will be two, three, and part of four. So that will focus your studying there. And yeah, you know it's going to be on three. Right, there's going to be a projectile motion problem. All right? Because we covered chapter one. I mean, chapter one, yes? How come it's not north of west since it's negative x and positive y? Because it is north of west. Good catch. I was wrong. Good. <laughs> That's why, because I made a mistake. There we go. Hmm. Mr. Helfer. All right, good. Thanks. All right. Now, all right, let's take a quiz. First of all, before we take the quiz, and, and this is going to be screwy because we're going to talk about projectiles in, on the last three questions of the quiz, and we haven't even talked about them yet. So I'm going to give you a quick and dirty. I'm going to give you th three minutes of projectiles. All right, first of all, here's the deal. Here we go. Now, projectiles, 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 projectiles. If, let's say, uh, okay, let's do this. Let's do a little Galilean type, Galilean, not Galilean, Galilean, it would walk on the water. But anyway, uh, 
Bad joke. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm going to roll this thing off, okay? And it's going to, I'm going to give it a little impetus here, and it's probably not going to go at a constant velocity. In fact, Galileo, when he was working with his painted balls that he used and stuff, his little cannonballs, he came up with very elaborate apparatus so that when the things would roll off the table, they would be going at a constant velocity. All right? You don't want anything to accelerate because you don't want any, you don't want any acceleration in the x-coordinate. But anyway, if it's going like this, well, uh, that, that wasn't bad because once you get something rolling that kind of goes at a constant velocity, once it goes, if you have a v-naught in the x-direction and in projectile motion, the only acceleration we have is what? Gravity going down. Is there any acceleration acting on this x component? No, there is not. So is there any reason why the x component should speed up or slow down? OK. Acceleration is only working this way. Is it working on this guy at all? Nope. So there's no reason for the x component never changes in your projectile motion. OK? Because the only acceleration is going up and down. Now what happens with something that I shoot up in the air, okay, let's say I shoot something up at an angle, all right, then it's got an x component, velocity in the x component, which is going to be v, this v, cosine of x, cosine theta, and it's got a y, vy sine theta. Now the vy sine theta initially is going to slow down, right, because here's what happens. Here's what acceleration does when it's in the same, when it's parallel to the velocity. Here's what acceleration does. You got this guy. That's my gravity monster, okay? You got a velocity going y up like this. The gravity monster is going to eat it. Eat, eat, crunch, 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 crunch. And it's going to get smaller and smaller until it goes to its maximum height. So its velocity is going to be zero. And then the gravity monster will spit him out. All right? Okay. Now, one last thing on trig. What would happen? Single theta here. What would happen to this angle theta if I doubled this leg and I doubled this leg? What would happen to theta? Should stay the same? Is it going to stay the same? What about this? Y'all ever play with similar triangles? What about these similar triangles? All these, ang these angles here are all congruent, right? Remember, the, remember those in your geometry days? You'd go blind reading, trying to read the geometry book. All right. And they'd put like 9,000 problems on one page so the publisher could save cost. All right. Um, but anyway, it should stay the same. Okay. In fact, you can try it on your calculator if you, when, when you get to that question. All right. So here we go. And what we're going to do is, I've, this is a professional quiz. I've got it all hooked up, and I'm going to show it to you. And we're, go, we're going to go through it, and you can talk among yourselves. And then we'll go through the answers, and you can turn them in, and then you can go home. All right? And have a nice weekend. Finish up your homework. Um, homework is like camouflage. It's continuous, so... Uh, Expect assignment five tomorrow. It'll be out there waiting for you. I don't know when it will be due. I haven't figured that out yet. I'm kind of random in my when they're due anyway. All right. Now, got to turn on this. Where's my? Let me turn on the projector. Do we have love from the projector? Is it turning on? Yes, there it goes. All right. We'll kill the lights. 
Most of you are lucky. You're already here. You've already seen this performance once. My people taking the video course, they spend the whole time watching me go back and forth, back and forth. All right, here we go. First of all, I've got a uh, documents, my documents. Um, Q. Okay, first, we're going to do this one, just to kind of get you in the mood for projectile motion. I don't know if you all saw this. Boy, they make you go through a lot of junk. Sorry. Of course, I should have been ready from the beginning. All right, here we go. Here's, a, here's your projectile motion problem. Uh-oh. Why does this drive me crazy? I froze it up, didn't I? All right. Sorry. Keep your temper. Temper, temper. Oh, my. All right, here we go. Oh, boy. Oh, sh. All right, let's try that one more time with feeling. I think I got everything off, didn't I? That was driving me nuts. Gosh dang. Okay, here we go. One more time. I'll let it load. I'll be nice. There we go. There we, there we go. Now, this is pretty funny. Finally. I don't know if it's worth all that that I put you through. Is that live or Memorex? Well, let's try that one more time. All right. This is when physics majors have too much time on their hands. I cracked up when I saw that. You know what? It's fake. They've tricked you. They've done their things. It really didn't happen. But it still looks like it. So anyway, there's projectile motion. We've got to find the deer. Now, did this take your quiz? That'll be easier to load. Is that not really quiz? This is kind of in-class problem. Open Sesame. Go to Q Drive. And here we go. This will be fun. See, professionally done. There you go. You're going to load these things. All right, now, this is a vector question. These are vector questions. You can talk among yourselves. It says, given that A, B, and C, A plus B equals C, and that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, how are vectors A and B oriented um, with respect to each other? Are they perpendicular, parallel, Parallel but in opposite directions. Are they 45 degrees to each other? They can be at any angle to each other. Take your tick and you can't ask Ting Yi or how what the answer is. <laughs> I don't care if you do do it in Mandarin. You can't do that. <laughs> What's it going to be? Parallel? I like perpendicular, but we'll, we'll see later. All right, let's go on to question two. Since you all are kind of being bashful, not talking to you. Oh, here we go. Have we seen this before? Deja vu all over again. If each component of a vector is doubled, what happens to the angle of the vector? Michaela, what happens to it? Oh. Could be. Could be. We'll see if it's C or not. The tension mounts. All right, now here we go. This is, this is a great problem. Now just think about this. 
a small cart. Now, neglecting all air resistance, a small cart is rolling at a constant velocity on a flat track. It fires a ball straight up into the air as it moves. After it is fired, what happens to the ball? It depends on how fast the cart is moving. Neglecting air resistance. Some of you might have tried this when you were younger. I remember we used to, like, if you're riding your bike and you threw a wiffle ball or something in the air, the wiffle ball would catch the wind. And, but it falls in front of the cart. It falls right back into the cart. It remains at rest. Which one do you think it is? I've heard every answer. This is good. I have no idea what it would be, but we'll see. No idea. OK. Let's go on to the question four. See, this professionally done. See, this is for clickers. Actually, they had a thing for clickers. Now the cart is being pulled along the horizontal track by an external force, a weight hanging over the table's edge, and accelerating. It fires the ball straight out of the cannon as it moves. After it's fired, what happens to the ball? Now the cart's accelerating. Hmm. Depends on how much the track is tilted. They didn't say anything about the tilted track, so throw that one out. It remains at rest. What? It falls right back into the cart. It falls in front of the cart, it falls behind the cart. I don't know. Let's see, it's something, and it's accelerated. Huh. Don't know. Okay. Here we go. Question five. You drop a package. Say they went to package. We're not dropping bombs on anybody here from a plane flying at a constant speed in a straight line. Without air resistance, the package will quickly lag behind the plane while falling, remain vertically under the plane while falling, move ahead of the plane while falling, not fall at all. If you're dropping bombs, that's a bad thing. <laughs> Y'all have seen Dr. Strangelove? Probably not. Way too young. When Slim Pickens went down and got on top of the A-bomb they were trying to drop and was because it wouldn't get out of the cargo bay door. That's a bad thing. So what's the that's the last question. Which what do you think? B, remain vertically under the plane while falling? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, maybe. Maybe. A little Galilean experiments here. Possibly. All right, let's see what our answers are. Let's see what the answers are. Okay. I'm so professional. Look at this. Open solutions. Ha ha. From the beginning. There you go. Yeah, they're perpendicular to each other. This is just the Pythagorean theorem. That's all it's saying. If A squared plus B squared. Um, right. I'm not going to say anything more. They're perpendicular. I would just muddy the waters. Okay, and here we go. Does not change. And, and I like their thing here. Tangent of theta equals y over x. And so if it's 2y over 2x, the 2's cancel. And so you still get the same theta. So, so you're good there. Oh, yeah, follow up. We don't have time for a follow up. I hear bag zipping. We got to go. All right. Um, says a small. What? What, what happened? It, fires ball, it falls back and falls right back into the cart. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. After it's fired, what happens to the ball? In the frame of reference of the cart, the ball only has a vertical component of velocity, so it goes up and comes right back down. Right. So I think it's D. Why does it say it remains at rest? To ground the observer, OK, so it moves. What? I didn't do that. 
I said it falls right back into the cart. That's a mistake. I got to send that to the publisher. It falls back into the cart. Right. I don't know why they circled it remains at rest. That's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. Okay. Yeah, Professor Lee Bain, thank you. Right. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, just throw my throw my trash on Front Street. I don't care. All right. Now the cart is being pulled along a horizontal track by an external force. Oh wait, hanging over the side. Okay. Now, this is when it accelerated, so where's the ball gonna fall? It'll fall behind it. And last but not least, we got a bombing run. Okay, this is why when the guys flying the Enola Gay really had to pull up, all right, because they're dropping an H bomb and they got to get out of there, all right, or on any other bombing run, because those, that thing's going to fall straight down. Now we've got smart bombs, of course, that fall a little bit, then take off and hone right in on whatever. Death and destruction. We should use physics for good things. But anyway, all right, all right. So now. That's it. I will see you all on Tuesday. Have a safe and happy weekend. Look for assignment five. He's out.